I'm Reed Schimmelfing, and I am with New Light Solutions, which is a company that I run that works with bright light therapy. And some people have talked about light therapy of other types, and so I want to just start out by differentiating between what I do and other types of light therapy. There are light therapies that are used for infections, treating infections, for physical therapy if you've had an injury, and those are all very effective treatments and uses for different kinds of light. The light that I work with is bright light that works with a specific physical process that I'll tell you about and is very helpful as a medication alternative for depression, for many sleep problems, and for other hormone problems. Um, and I would encourage you to experience it. Uh, and I've got set up right over here, and I'll show you myself what it's like or what it, what it actually is to, to do light therapy, so that the free samples that I talk about. The sheet that I handed out that has the blue printing, along the bottom of it has a list of conditions where it's recommended that you not put yourself in front of very bright light without medical clearance. So if you don't have one of those conditions, feel free, as I'm talking, to come up and sit in one of these two chairs over here where I've set up the light. And I am going to set the microphone down. Hopefully I won't deafen anybody with that. And I will just sit in the light for a moment, in front of the light, I'm sorry, so that you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll keep talking even though you may not be able to hear me, but it is a very simple process. You sit. The light shines at your face. Your eyes are open, but you can be doing something else. You can be reading or talking with a friend or watching TV or whatever. But the light shining into your eyes is what needs to happen. So as I said, the light shining into your eyes, your eyes open, but you can be doing anything else. You don't have to stare at the light. There's no reason for that. There's no benefit in that. And this is just one example of the types of lights available. I brought some other ones over here, which we will talk more about as, as our time goes on. But the light is, let me, let me give you a little explanation first. The light is something that we need and we would love to, for everybody to be able to get it from the sunlight, but we can't always get the light we need when we need it. And so the treatment that has come about that I get involved with supplements what you might be not able to get, especially in the winter time in the north, or if you are struggling with other weather problems or health problems that prevent you from getting natural sunlight. Um, as I said, one of the conditions that it's known for using it uh, and treating it is seasonal depression specifically seasonal depression, although it's very effective for any kind of depression. Seasonal depression tends to be, you may have heard of the winter blues. Uh, in the wintertime, tend to lose energy, lose interest in things, not sleep soundly. Um, sometimes people will uh, get really craving certain foods. There's a lot of different problems that people experience with seasonal depression. And that's where the light was first developed, using it for seasonal depression. We realized that, and but when I say we, it's researchers 30 or 40 years ago, uh, realized that as the intensity of the sun and the length of the day shortened and decreased, people would go into this depression, and they didn't do anything to become depressed, it just happened. And then in the springtime, as the days got longer, the depression would lift. And it was simply a matter of supplementing the light because that was the change that the, the researchers noticed. Giving the light, they found that that was helpful. Now the light that's on over here is what's called a full spectrum light. 
and it is designed to replace or copy the type of light that we get from the sun as close as possible. Uh, we get that, if you remember, the prism that you would put up in the window in, in grade school, and we'd see the blue light and the red light and the green light and the purple light. All of those parts of the light spectrum and many more that we can't see are coming at us from the sun. There's special gases in the fluorescent tubes in these lights so that it replicates as close as possible the, the type of light that we naturally get from the sun, the, the type that we evolved with because that's what we get every day. Now along the way, researchers found that it was really the blue part of the light spectrum that was helpful to us. And so you can, I'll lift this up because the table is pretty low, but this little light does the same thing as the other one that's on using just the blue part of the spectrum. So some people who have some of those conditions that were on that sheet with the blue ink, uh, who wouldn't be able to use a bright light will be able to benefit from it because the blue light is not as bright. So some of the eye problems that people have uh, are, can be a problem, but that's a way to, to get around that problem. So let me talk a little bit about how it works, and then we can talk about more of the things that it does. And one thing I just want to say is I When I'm speaking, I don't have a problem with people asking questions if they're related to what I'm asking and, and what I'm talking about and asking the question would help to clarify. But if you have another question about something I haven't gotten to yet, especially on the handout, I'll probably be getting to it and I will leave time at the end for questions like that. So if you have a clarifying question, by all means, give me a shout. Uh, it, and again, if I get started to talk too fast, or if I drop the microphone too low, or something like that, give me a shout. Uh, but I will try to cover as many of those different areas where light therapy can be helpful, uh, sort of in succession. Okay, so there are, in the back of our eye, if this is your eyeball, and the open part is the way, where the light comes in at the front of your eye, back here at the back, and if I had two hands, I'd use my other finger to point at it, uh, is where the light hits it. When, when, you're, when the light comes in your open eye, the light hits the back of your eye, and that's where the rods and the cones are, if you remember that from school. And you get to see shapes and you get to tell colors because those send signals to the brain and the brain interprets them and says, oh, that's a tree, or whatever it is that you're looking at. It wasn't until 1999 that we discovered that there is yet another receptor in addition to the rods and the cones. And this receptor, its job is to help us manage our daily cycle, what's called the circadian rhythm. How every day we start a fresh start in the morning and we go through a process where our activity is increased and decreased, our appetite uh, shows up at certain points in the t over the course of the day. Our body temperature rises and lowers a little bit over the course of the day. And pretty much each person has their own cycle that gets repeated every day. What can happen is if you don't have a way to get that regulated or reset, it can get out of alignment and then things get messed up like your sleep pattern. Okay, it also can contribute to depression. So one of the things that the light does, it's bright enough to trigger this receptor, and it's got a really long name, I won't trouble you with it, but it triggers that receptor. When that receptor is triggered, it sends a message through to your brain, just like the rods and the cones that say, oh, that's a tree. It sends that message to the brain the brain uses that information and starts sending messages to various glands in your body that control, the, that regulate, I'll use that word, that regulate the release of hormones into your blood and into your brain. So as an example, 
One of the hormones, maybe people have heard about melatonin. Okay, I hear some and see some nods. And melatonin, for those of you who aren't aware, is a hormone that we produce in a gland in our body called the pineal gland. And it's a tiny little gland and there's not much melatonin, but it's a really important hormone. If we don't have it in our blood, we're not going to sleep well. If we have it in our blood when we want to be awake, we're not going to be alert. It is a really powerful substance and it's great when it's there when you want it to be there and not there when you don't want it to be there, but it's a real problem if it's there, you want to be alert and it's there, you want to fall asleep and it's not there. What the light does when you get sitting in front of a very bright light, it will send that signal to your brain. The brain sends the signal to the pineal gland. Hey, don't release the melatonin into the bloodstream. Hold on to that melatonin. So you're alert. And anybody that's feeling like my voice is dragging on and it's siesta time at 2.15 in the afternoon and wants to have a little alert time, those two chairs are sitting there empty. Um, and it's very effective at stopping that melatonin from being released into the blood and keeping a person alert. So it's a nice thing to use in the winter time, first thing in the morning, any time of the day, any time of the year, first thing in the morning, as a way to start the day. It also can be a really useful thing at this time of the day if you don't want to fall asleep, because it is kind of a natural siesta time, low energy, a lot of people are, are prone to taking a nap. And if you want to take a nap, I wouldn't want to stop you. <laughs> But if you don't want to take a nap, but you're not feeling really alert, you sit in front of the light sometimes for just five minutes, and it can shut off that release of melatonin. Change, there's other things that are changing as well, but those uh, begin that process of uh, changing the energy level that you have because of the hormones changing in your blood. Now, does that make sense? You with me? Okay. What happens, uh, a lot of times I'll talk about seasonal depression because that's the first thing that light therapy was used for. Researchers have done the most work on learning about what effect light has for people with seasonal depression. So I may reference a research study based on seasonal depression. Sometimes it's pretty specific to seasonal depression, but most often it's also something that would be would apply to other like non-seasonal depression or some of the other conditions that uh, light therapy works for. So, for instance, many times people with a seasonal depression or the winter blues, they will have a hard time getting going in the morning. And like a bear, once he's fallen asleep in the fall, he doesn't want to wake up until there's more food out there and it's warm. But something's going to wake him up, and if he wakes up, he's going to be pretty ornery. And he's going to be kind of dozy and dumb. And there's reports of, you know, a sunny day in March or February, and a bear goes, you know, wandering out in the middle of the road. Uh, because he's not really thinking. Same thing happens with us. Hopefully not to that extreme, but what's happening for that bear and for us is the melatonin is continuing to trickle into our bloodstream and we're trying to walk around. So we're half asleep and we're sort of out of it. And we might do things that are dangerous or just not do what we need to be doing because we don't have the energy and we can't focus. So the light shuts that melatonin off so we can be alert. The other thing that often happens is that because the melatonin is trickling out into our bloodstream all morning, if we don't use the light, we don't have enough melatonin available that night to sleep soundly and to sleep through the night. So we have a hard time falling asleep or we don't sleep well. We wake up at two or three in the morning and we can't get back to sleep. And then the next day we start all over again because we're tired, so we're not really awake in the morning. So the light is a great tool to just break that negative cycle and shift it into something that works in our lifestyle. 
so that we're up and ready for breakfast. We're alert for when there's activities and when there's things to be done. And then when we do want to sleep, we sleep soundly and we're, we're um, rested for the next day. Um, let me stop and see if there's any questions about what I've talked about so far. Any things that aren't clear or any things that I should add that I haven't gone far enough on? Okay, either I've totally lost you or I'm right on target. Hopefully I'm right on target, but I, I never know for sure. Okay, um, let me talk about some of the other ways. I can't stand right in front of that or I deafen myself. Let me talk about some of the other things that light therapy can be used for. Uh, and again, the type of light therapy that I'm talking about, bright light therapy. Um, th one of the conditions that it can be helpful for is Parkinson's disease. Now, it does not serve as the treatment for Parkinson's. And most people who have Parkinson's, the biggest problem is the, the quivering, the shaking, and uh, related uh, problems because of an imbalance in hormones. The light therapy helps to regulate those hormones so that they need less of the L-DOPA medication. And if you know anything about Parkinson's or know anybody that has it, the L-DOPA medication is something that is a very powerful and actually toxic substance. It's very helpful, but our bodies can only tolerate it for so long. So the least amount of medication possible and taking breaks from the medication periodically so that our body can cleanse the medication out is important so that the person's <laughs> health is maintained. Using the light therapy with L-DOPA, well, first of all, it can delay the beginnings of needing to use L-DOPA. But secondly, once a person's condition has progressed and they need to use the medication, if they use it with the light therapy, they need less quantity. The dosage can be lower to get the same benefit. And then when they need to take that medication vacation, the break from the medication to cleanse their body, they continue with the light and the tremoring is less and the other impacts, the negative impacts are, are reduced. Uh, many people with Parkinson's also suffer from depression and there is both a reality that it affects one's life and that can lead to depression because they're limited in what they can do but also physiologically there are medical effects of the Parkinson's disease that lead to depression so the light can be helpful in reducing the depression as well. One question that people ask a lot is well how long do I have to sit with this light? I don't have a lot of time or it's really bright, do I have to sit forever? It varies from person to person, and the effect of the light is individualized. But most people will use it for about 20 <coughs> to 30 minutes a day. <coughs> depending on the condition, depending on the person. Uh, but that being said, many people enjoy the light because it does make them feel better. And even if they don't have a particular condition, it does help with energy, it helps with mental clarity, it gives a feeling of well-being for a lot of people. So they choose to sit longer than that in front of the light if they can. And like I said, you can be doing something else. You can watch TV or you can be playing cards or talking on the phone. There are really no limits as long as your eyes are open. So many people will end up using the light for an hour or two, maybe not all in one sitting, but over the course of the day, they will get a, a sizable amount of time in front of the light because they want to. And one of the nice things about the light is that the, the concept of an overdose is really, um, it's pretty insignificant for most people. Whereas with a medication, like let's say Tylenol, on the bottle it says take two pills every four hours. And if you take four pills, you could damage your liver maybe. So the, what you need in order to get the benefit is pretty close to what is too much. Whereas with light therapy, 
because it's no different than being outside on a sunny day, really, uh, and I'll talk about some numbers about that in a minute, uh, it's not a problem if you, let's say you need 30 minutes to get the benefit that you're looking for. If you get two hours or even more, you're not going to have any problems. If, and if you do have some problem, what it's likely to be is you're going to get a headache or your eyes are going to feel strained. Or you're going to say, you know, I'm getting edgy. I just want to shut this light off and get out of here. Great idea. Shut the light off and go take a walk or something like that. So the, the downside might be discomfort for 20 minutes and then it's over. And you can have a fresh start two hours later or the next day. You have yes. to face it though. Yes, in order for the light to work, it has to be shining into your open eyes. Other than that, I know, if I could show the face that she made to all you people, <laughs> that was great. Uh, and the experience most people have is the first couple of days, oh, that thing is really bright. Oh, how long do I have to sit in front of it? And what I tell people is, don't sit longer than you feel like is tolerable. And I don't mean this is painful but tolerable. I mean, yeah, this is mildly annoying and I'm going to stop. Okay? And it may take you several days to build up to 30 minutes, let's say. So a few days of, wow, that thing is really bright, can I turn it off yet? And then a few days of, yeah, I remember when I couldn't wait to turn it off, and I know it's still bright, but it's all right. And then after that, it's, I remember when I used to hate it when I had that light in front of me. Now, I don't like it when I don't get the light today. They miss it. They look for it. They acknowledge that it's very bright, but it's not an uncomfortable brightness anymore. Partly because they're getting a benefit and they feel better when they sit in front of the light, but also because our eyes acclimate to it and it's not so bright that it's painful for healthy eyes. Again, if you had macular degeneration or glaucoma, you should talk with your doctor, get, make, get clearance that it's okay, it's not gonna cause damage to, to your eyes. Yes? But she would not be wearing her glasses when she looked into her. Good question, wearing glasses. Glasses are not a problem as long as you don't have sunglasses. If you're blocking the light from coming in, like you do with sunglasses, you're blocking the sunlight, then you're reducing the effect. But plain old glasses, not a problem. There are some purists who tell you that you shouldn't use glasses because that's another layer of interference, but it doesn't make a significant difference at all. Yes. Same thing for contact lenses. Same thing for contact lenses. And while we're at it, let's talk about cataracts. Especially in a group like this, there's usually a lot of nodding about cataracts. And just to make you feel better, you, our eyes have been losing their, uh, their functioning since about age 10. The, the best eyes are in 10 year olds and younger. After that, we do start to get a little clouding in our lenses, gradually to the point where it's such a problem, they call it cataracts and they start talking about needing to remove that, that clouding. So the light doesn't get into our eyes as efficiently if we have a cataract. Also, our, the ability for our eye to open up and let the light in and open and close quickly is decreasing since age 10 so that we're not as good at adjusting to bright lights when we're driving or that kind of thing. And then those receptors in the back of our eye and the signaling going back to the brain, all of that loses a little bit over time and it accumulates over time to the point where if you had a 10-year-old and a 90-year-old standing next to each other out on a sunny day, and they're both loving this beautiful sunlight, the 90-year-old is really getting 10% of the benefit of what that 10-year-old is getting. Does that make sense? They're getting the light that the 10-year-old is experiencing compared to the light that the 90-year, the exact same light 
And the way the 90-year-old is experiencing it, the 90-year-old's experience is the effect of 10% of the light that the 10-year-old is getting. If a person has had cataract removal, that drops it down a couple of decades. So it would be the equivalent of a 70-year-old who hadn't had cataract removal, the 90-year-old who had had cataract removal. So we know that it's a progressive thing. Now, in order for this light to be doing what it needs to do for us, we need at least 1,000 lux of light. Lux is a scale used by scientists and researchers and physicians to measure brightness of light. One lux is the light of the full moon without any lights, parking lights or whatever. And that is enough so that we can kind of see ourselves. We can see almost a shadow, uh, but we're not going to be able to read much. We're not going to be able to tell color. The typical, this room, let's say, if we didn't have that, if you weren't sitting in front of that light, would be about 200 lux. It's typical living room lighting. Typical office or store with the fluorescence overhead is about 500 lux. This is giving you 10,000 lux, like the minimum is 1,000 to, to make this process happen. 10,000 lux, which is about what you get if you're looking at the sun as it's risen or the sun set just before it sets when it's at the horizon. It's not going to damage your eyes because it's going through so much atmosphere. It's a very bright thing, but of course, when it's the sun set, it's fleeting. It's pretty soon it's going to be gone away. As the sun is rising, it's not too far up before you're going to say, oh, this is too bright. It's unpleasant. The full sun up high in the sky is 100,000 lux or more. So it can be a lot brighter. And of course, that's where you would cause eye damage looking at the full bright sunshine day. So getting the 10,000 lux is more than the 1,000. So even if you have cataracts, even if you're um, not sitting in the right position so it's partially shading, like the, the brim of your nose or something, the bridge of your nose is partially shading the light, you're still going to get enough light to get the benefit, but not so much that it's going to cause you eye damage. All right, so that was some good questions and got me in a good direction. Are there other questions, that, things that I haven't touched on yet? Okay, let me talk about some of the other conditions. Um, Alzheimer's is one that's on the list. And there's really three areas where using the light can be helpful for Alzheimer's. Firstly, many people with Alzheimer's are also depressed. So it helps with reducing the depression. Also, many people with Alzheimer's have sleep problems. Regulating that circadian day is a problem. So again, what I've talked about with sleep would be applicable for that condition. And the third one is familiar with the term sundowning. Sundowning is where usually late in the afternoon, sometimes early evening, a person with Alzheimer's can have either confusion increase or agitation and using the light in the afternoon can either reduce or sometimes even eliminate that problem. Okay, so it's a valuable tool that I have a, actually a research, um, a summary of a research study here, if anybody would like it, that uh, in Britain, I believe, they found that being able to use the light would give a person an extra six months before they had to go into some kind of a care facility because they're using the light over somebody that didn't use the light. So again, it's not, just like with Parkinson's, it's not going to cure, it's not going to be the only treatment, but when added to other interventions, it can make a big difference. Okay. Um, now, how long is somebody going to need to use this? You know, I talk about 30 minutes a day, maybe more if you want to. It depends on the condition. Some people who have sleep problems and are looking for using it as a way to get sleep back in balance, they may only need to use it a day or two, and it gets that cycle reset so that they're ready for the day in the morning and they're ready to sleep at night and their, their day is back in line. 
And maybe when the daylight savings time changes or they travel or they have an illness, they might get off track again and they might need to pull the light back out and use it for another couple of days. But that could be a month or two months or, or six months later. They're not going to need it on a regular basis. People who have a seasonal depression are likely to use it through the problem part of the season. And that varies a lot from person to person. Uh, as the days start to get shorter, it's more likely that someone's going to say, I'm really dragging down here, I need to use the light. Uh, I've had the range of the people that I work with is people in August who are telling me, I know it's August, but the days are getting shorter and I'm feeling it. And they start using the light in August. Other people who don't need to start until after uh, January 1st. Maybe they're holding on for the holidays, or maybe it's just you know the accumulation of cold and short days and, and all. They start needing it about this time of the year. I've had people tell me that they don't need it starting in February. They say, I can feel the days getting longer. And even though it's still dark at 5 o'clock, it's not dark at 4.30 like it was a month ago, and that's enough for me. I, could, I put my light away because I don't need it. And then there's other people who use it well into April. And there are people with seasonal depressions who will use it if we have a string of cloudy days even in the middle of the summer. Because the, the need for light, if they don't get it for several days in a row, they start to feel the same way they feel in January or February. They pull the light out of the closet in July. There's no rules. If it works, great. And you can stop it at any time. It's not like an antidepressant medication where you can't abruptly stop a medication or you'll have a withdrawal reaction. If you don't want the light, you don't use it, there's not going to be any consequences. Most people with some of these other conditions will need to use it pretty much every day. Like with Parkinson's, for instance, that I talked about before. Uh, it's a part of their routine. And the person realizes, I use this for half an hour a day. I need less medication. That's worth it. Uh, when I don't use it, my tremor comes back or, or whatever other condition, aspects of their condition, the symptom problems that they have, they say, I don't want to go that way. I want to have the least amount of symptoms with the least amount of medication possible. And they use the light every day or most every day. And many times people, again, with a seasonal depression will tell me, you know, I can skip a day, no problem. I can usually get away with skipping two days. But if I skip the third day, then it feels like my batteries are running down and I'm, I'm needing to you know, reckon with that. And I need to make sure I don't skip more than one, maybe two days. Let's talk about some of the other equipment that I brought. Um, this light over here, the one that's on, you get that 10,000 lux that they recommend if it's 20 inches away from your eyes. 20 inches, a little under two feet, it's pretty close. In, in use, most people don't use it that close, so they're not getting the full 10,000 lux. They're still getting more than 1,000 lux so that it's fine, it's very work, workable, it's very effective, but it's just really close and they don't need it, so they don't put it that close. Uh, this one I picked up before, this blue one, which is, it actually has a sister that looks just like it that has a built-in battery. So like a cell phone or a laptop computer, you plug it in and charge it up and then you don't need to be plugged in to use it. So I've had people tell me they use it camping. Uh, one guy that was doing shift work, and that's another area where the light can be really helpful, he was working a 3 to 11 shift and they had a supper break at about 8 o'clock and in the winter time he just couldn't make it to 11. He would fall asleep and he had a manufacturing job. It was dangerous to be groggy. So during his supper break, you know, the rest of the guys are in the break room hanging out, talking, whatever. He would go out to his pickup truck, he'd pull his light out from the glove box, set it up on the dashboard and he'd read a book. And the only strange thing about it was, if somebody came by, they'd see this big parking lot, and it's all dark because it's 8 o'clock at night in the wintertime, 
and there's this one pickup truck with blue light coming out of all the windows. It's like E.T. or something. But anyway, it worked for him because he didn't have to plug in, and he was able to use it. One nice thing about this one is that it has a uh, dimming feature. Ah, I forgot that this one does plug in. Every time I push a button, it will get a little bit brighter. And then this other button, it gets a little bit dimmer. So each press of the button is 10% brightness. What that's nice for is, especially when you're getting used to the light, you don't want that really bright stuff because it's hard to adjust to that. This gives you the chance to have uh, light and enough light, but not the full amount. And again, a lot of people, just like not being 20 inches away from that one, a lot, a lot of people will use it at half brightness and they never get more than that because they don't need it. Now with any of these, especially the blue, but with any of them, you're not gonna want this to be the only light in the room because it's gonna feel like an interrogation. If, the, if you get up at six in the morning and it's dark and the only light is that light, you're gonna feel like somebody's trying to get the truth out of you. You wanna, you wanna have the lights on in the room like you normally would and then have this be the supplement that's only designed to go into your eyes. You're obviously not going to be able to read a magazine or do your crossword puzzle that's in front of you if the light, the only light available is shining into your face. You're going to want something else that's illuminated, uh, illuminating what you're working with or what you're, what you're looking at. Um, and which reminds me, a lot of times people will say, well, I saw an ad in a magazine for full spectrum light. You talked about full spectrum, right? I said, yeah. And they said that I would get 10,000 lux and it was only $39.99. And I think I'm going to get one of those. And there's nothing wrong with these, but generally these are a gooseneck lamp that is adjustable. And if you look at the magazine picture in the ad, you'll see that the light is generally shining down on the person's crossword puzzle or book or knitting or, or whatever they're doing. So it's great to illuminate what you're working on. In order to get what I'm talking about effect, it has to be shining into your face. So one would have to have one for illuminating their work and then a different one that actually was shining in their face. And then when you look at the fine print, the 10,000 lux has a little asterisk. And you look down below at the asterisk and it says 10,000 lux at four inches. So in order for it to be giving you 10,000 lux, the light would have to be this close to you. I don't think too many people are going to be comfortable with that. I don't think that's really how it's going to be used. So it's important to know what you're talking about. And what I do for people is I meet with them, first of all, to make sure you're a good candidate for light. If there are any conditions that we need to make sure medically that you're not going to be <coughs> causing a, a problem for your, your system, your condition. And then to look at what you're wanting the light to do. Do you want to deal with depression? Do you want to balance your sleep? Are you having some kind of a hormone balance problem? Or do you just want it because you want to feel better? You want to have more energy? You want to have more life? And then based on that and how your normal day goes, we set up a plan for how you will use the light. What time of the day you would use it, or times of the day, often more than once, and for how long. And ultimately, I can give you recommendations, but in fact, everybody's experience with it is unique. So I encourage people to keep track of their use of the light so that they know whether doing a certain pattern was helpful for them or how it affected them. Over time, doing the same pattern several times, if they see the same result, they're gonna say, oh, if I do this, then this is how I react. Might be very different from how the next person reacts but you, gonna, you get to know who, how you react and that's gonna be helpful for, for you. So you keep a log and you uh, get that information for yourself. Now, the other thing about this portable guy, let me come back to this. Comes, ah, I got it all tangled up here. It comes with its very own suitcase. <laughs> got a little carry case with a handle. Very, very portable, very user friendly. Come back here and see how long I can extend my cord. This one, is much less bright than the one over there. And 
what many people do is they will get two of these and they'll put them on one on either side of their computer monitor or something like that where they can get the full amount of light but it's not all coming from one spot so it's not as intense okay um, I'll turn that off just because I don't want it. the amount of light that anybody in this room would be getting from this isn't going to bother you if you have one of those conditions so so I won't worry about that but it's just rather, rather uncomfortable the one on the end here I brought that one just to give people an idea of the range of how they can be designed you know this one here it it's kind of set up like a piece of furniture and you can get them in oak and light stains and dark stains and if you used them like on, at your easy chair when you're done using it you just set it down beside the chair people wouldn't even think about it some of the others look much more like a piece of medical equipment and, and that bothers them and the one that the toy that I need to show you not that it's a toy but this one here is the ultimate in portability and it's really actually not available in the United States right now. I was at a conference this past summer in Montreal for a, uh, an organization uh, for light therapists and this is a, a company in Belgium that came out of a university in Belgium's research and they designed, they studied various light therapy equipment and the ways people were using it and the complaints people had about it like you had to sit still that kind of thing and so they created this new tool now there are other ones that you can get in the United States that are like a baseball cap and on the front of the brim of the cap there are lights that shine down onto at your face at your eyes and I've not ever used one of those but most people who do uh, have who have told me about it say it feels like it's just too bright and you can't really dust or take a walk or whatever because it always feels like somebody's shining a flashlight in your face and so it's very unpleasant um, the these guys took that and they instead of having the light out here shining at your face they have the light Ooh, sorry about that let me turn this on I can do all this one-handed if I'm lucky there's a little battery inside this compartment up here technical difficulties it was lighting and then I messed it up well now it's not going to cooperate for me I'm not sure what I did the lights come out and shine straight down at this little shield and that's curved so that it focuses the light at your eyes and makes it smaller as it comes close to your face rather than getting larger as it comes close to your face and it just sits even if you're wearing glasses you can wear it and it's high enough up so that it's not a real problem and it's very stable on your person's face uh, it comes with different uh, pieces here so you can adjust it because every, the bridge of everybody's nose is a little bit different and I'm really frustrated that it won't light for me because I was talking with these guys that had developed it and were displaying it and talking about different ways they could uh, modify it and they're looking forward to being able to sell it in the US once they get the last glitches done but it is available in Europe maybe afterward when I have both hands free I will uh, be able to get this working and people can try it on uh, after we finish uh, let me stop at this point there's a bunch of other things I could be talking about but I want to make sure there's enough time for questions um, and I realize how the time is going so let me stop my my words and and ask if there are questions and things that I haven't been clear on or other conditions that maybe I haven't touched on yet that you had a, a question about yes okay, I'm bothered by the light. And in fact, a lot of days that glare really bothers my eyes and I have to close the blinds. Okay. What kind of, uh, would that bother me? Would or? you be able to use it because you're bothered by glare and bright light? It's a good question. And some people, it's kind of like the, 
the high beams and the headlights of the car coming at you, that that kind of light, it's not a whole lot of light, but that one bright light is bothersome. Whereas the equal amount of brightness in a different situation would not be a problem. So for those folks, they get close to the light, it fills their whole vision, and it is fine. Other people have difficulty adjusting to that. And that's where the blue light can be helpful because it's not as bright, it's not as glary as the white light. So it would be something to consider. What I recommend to people, and I was just working with somebody this morning about it, uh, to start with the white light. And what I do is I meet with people, do that assessment, and then since most people are not familiar with the, the whole experience of light therapy, rather than investing in a light, which can be a couple hundred dollars, I rent the light out. So people take it home with them for two weeks. They have a chance to experience the light in their life to see how it fits. And they also get a chance to see if that particular light works for them. You know, I wish it was smaller, or I wish it was different shaped because I've got a table that only has so much space. The blue versus the white. So they have a chance to take it home, they try the light, they experience it, they raise questions, they, they talk about how it worked for them. And that's one thing that often happens. And like I said just this morning, a woman went home with a white light knowing that if she didn't tolerate that brightness, that I would swap it out with one of the blue ones that I have so she could use the blue light and see if that was better. Once you've had it at home, you've tried it, you find out if it works, and I would say, in my experience, about 80% of the people who try it say, wow, this really is great, it really helps. Um, and let, let me just throw in another thought with this. Most people, especially with the depression, using it as a tool for depression, before they notice, wow, this is really helping me, other people around them start talking about, gee, you're different, what's going on? How come you're so much more laughing or your, your mood seems to be better? And I don't know, I still, it's just me. And that's the nice thing about the light. It doesn't change a person, it doesn't make them somebody that they're not. It just gives them themselves back. So they don't feel like there's anything different or anything changing, but other people around them notice it before they do. So, that uh, answer your question? Okay. Yes. I see where it says he has sleep cycle management and sleep disorder. And I'm thinking of that little blue light. Now, if a person slept well for maybe three or four hours and then woke up and laid awake for an hour or two, mm -hmm. would they turn that light on to good, help them? Good question. Get okay, back so to sleep? if you get to sleep but then you don't stay asleep for the full eight hours, do you turn the light on in the middle of the night? To, to get, get you back to sleep? Yeah, I just wondered. Definitely no, but that's a good question, and it's an area I usually have talked about by now, and I didn't, so I apologize. And just let me let you know, the lights are on timers, so this one is going to turn off in a few minutes, which is kind of the alarm to say I better shut up because my hour is up, uh, and this one is already turned off, uh, but it, that's not a, any kind of a problem. In fact, what the lights do is it sends the signal to your brain to be more alert, and to wake up. So you wouldn't want to use it in the middle of the night because it's not going to help you fall asleep. What you would want to do in a situation like that is figure out, am I waking up because I'm anxious about something? Or because I have physical discomfort, I have pain, and that's keeping me awake? Or maybe I'm not getting enough melatonin to keep me asleep or help me go back to sleep when I get up to go to the bathroom. And so if it's not enough melatonin, it may be because it's trickling out in the morning, like I talked about earlier. And so you need to use the light first thing in the morning so that you save the melatonin until bedtime. Uh, or it might be that your body isn't making as much melatonin as you need. And as we get older, we tend to not produce as much of these hormones as we Isn't used to. Is there melatonin on the market that you can take orally? You can both buy melatonin supplements and Another option is buying a supplement that gets your body to make its own melatonin more. So there's a variety of tools to use 
around the sleep issue, but specific to your question, you don't want to use the light within an hour or two of when you want to sleep because it pretty strongly sends a signal to, through your body, stay awake, be awake, be alert. So using the light would, for most people, but just like caffeine, some people can have an espresso at 10 o'clock at night and fall asleep. So it doesn't affect everybody the same way. But in general, an hour or two before you want to sleep, you want to turn the light off so that you're, you're not going to have that effect. Any other questions? Yes? There are, there are no ultraviolet rays. Ah, uh, ultraviolet rays is another topic that is a good one to talk about. We need ultraviolet rays for certain things. We get ultraviolet from the sun. Some of the things that ultraviolet does is it's what gives us a tan, for better or for worse. It also gives us sun cancer, obviously sun cancer, skin cancer, obviously for worse. But it also, for better, it's what we need in order to produce vitamin D. The exposure to ultraviolet on our skin, we produce vitamin D and then it absorbs in through our skin. However, the damage that ultraviolet can do to our eyes is very significant. And since this is designed to be aiming at your face with your eyes open, you would have much more of a detriment to having ultraviolet than you would the benefit that vitamin D would give you. These are designed to screen out, to block out all of the ultraviolet rays. You, there are some still around, old light therapy equipment before they realize this, that are not screening the ultraviolet out but pretty much any light therapy equipment like this is going to stop, is going to block the ultraviolet. Now, the treatments for other conditions, other types of light therapy are ultraviolet. Ultraviolet light kills germs. So your dentist uses a UV light to uh, sterilize the dental equipment between patients. Ultraviolet is not bad in and of itself, but Shining in your eyes is not what you want. Yeah. Any other questions? You folks have been a great group. Thank you. Uh, one of the things, the, the small yellowish card, the, the three by six or whatever it is, has on the back of it a, a little thank you of a discount for a rental. If you or someone you know you think might benefit from it, feel free to use that. Give me a call or... Uh, talk to me today, and I would be happy to set up a time to, to begin the process with you. And as a thank you for your time, give you a discount on that process.